Thank you. And thank you very much for this invitation to speak at this excellent meeting. I'm going to concentrate on this test uh, that was issued by NHLBI, which is a division of the US National Institutes of Health, uh, for the availability of administrative supplements and revision supplements on coronavirus. Can I have the next slide? Okay, I just want to say that although we're concentrating on the NHLBI RFA, there are a number of the NI, NIH's oh, institutes um, issuing RFAs, um, and you will find that list of RFAs at the link that's at the top of this slide. Uh, just to note that it is a dynamic list uh, between last week when we had this symposium scheduled and this week there's at least three new institutes have announced uh, the availability of supplements. Next slide. Okay, so the purpose of the NHLBI notice of special interest is to focus on research for coronavirus disease uh, with specific interest in these areas in host response association of heart, lung and blood diseases, potential impacts on transfusion safety and the clinical, clinical outcomes of infected disease of individuals. They're looking to take advantage of ongoing human research or unique model systems. And the research uh, that's proposed should inform efforts to diagnose, prevent, mitigate or treat uh, the viral infection and associated heart, lung and blood diseases. Next slide. Okay, the notice of special interest uh, highlights potential possible research areas, but I believe that this is it's not limited to these areas. Um, people may in this audience may be particularly interested in the last point, which is the development testing of strategies in healthcare systems uh, to look at barriers and facilitate facilitators in the treatment of high risk populations. Next slide. So to be eligible to apply to this call, um, you need to have an existing award from the NHLBI. Um, it's, the other thing is it needs to have sufficient time left on that award and the original period, not an extension period of the grant to complete the studies that you are proposing. You also need to check that you have an eligible um, grant, grant award and those are checking the eligibility activity codes. You, if you, get to, you can use funds, you can propose to use funds for the collection of blood or lung samples from human cohorts, or to use model systems to expose animals and cells to the infectious agent. Next slide. So there are two funding mechanisms that they are using within this special interest, uh, notice of special interest. The first one is administrative supplement, where the research that you are proposing is within the general scope of your current award or an urgent competitive revision where you are going to pr um, propose research that is outside the current scope of your award. Next slide. I just want to touch very quickly on the nuts and bolts, the administrative supplement rules. Uh, the rules for administrative supplements, there may be new objectives within the original scope of your award, or it may be for cost increases associated with unanticipated expenses. And again, as I said earlier, it needs the work, administrative supplement needs to take place at, within the time of your approved project period. And there's some more links to information on this slide. Next slide. Just to say that um, administrative supplements do not receive peer review. They are evaluated by NIH staff. And they will judge whether 
what you are proposing will increase or preserve the parents award overall impact within the original scope of the award. Next slide. The NIH have actually produced some additional information on FAQs on administrative supplements um, due to COVID-19. They are saying that if you are wanting or needing an administrative supplement for costs that have incurred as a result of disruption of your work due to COVID-19, wait a while to make sure that you've actually identified all the costs um, um, that have been incurred as a result of the disruption. But there are two exceptions to this where you can apply immediately. One is where you have an existing project that you want to add research questions of direct relevance to the epidemic and other ones where you need funds for a mission critical um, activity that you need to undertake in the next three months. Next slide. The other funding mechanism that you can use is the urgent competitive revision mechanism. This is um, to meet to, for an immediate need to address a specific health crisis, but one that was unforeseen at the time of application. This is for an in increase in scope in your, in your, your, your research. And in, they give in, um, information on the increase of scope being things like the addition of human subjects or children, where that had not been included in the original grant, or the in, um, inclusion of vertebrate animals in your research. This application budgets are not limited, but they need to reflect the actual needs of the proposed uh, research. Again, you need to have an active award um, to, to access this funding. Next slide. Uh, the, the review of urgent... Um, the review. Two, hi, Jill. Two more, two more minutes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I'll talk quickly. Okay. Just to say that there's slightly different review criteria. They're reviewed in slightly different manner to um, administrative supplements, um, but the information is on this slide. Next slide. There is specific guidance on this notice of special interest in the information that was released. Project periods would be generally limited to one year. They are accepted on a rolling basis up until October the 5th. You have to address issues of potential biohazards. And if you are looking at this uh, route, you are strongly encouraged to contact and discuss your proposed research aims with NIH program staff. Next slide. This is just a summary of the two funding mechanisms that compares what an administrative supplement is to a competitive revision, uh, focusing on the difference in scope and different review, but the similar deadline, and also both advised to contact NIH staff if you are interested in applying for this funding. Next, next slide. Okay, I'll just say that the other uh, NIH institutes, their notices of special interest all vary slightly. Uh, the uh, National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, um, they are looking for competitive revisions, uh, but they have a much longer application window up until March next year. Next slide. Again, they have outlined their areas of interest. Next slide. Okay, but many of you listening may not have um, an NIH grant and therefore are not eligible to directly apply for this, this funding. But you can find out you may have collaborators who have eligible grants who may be interested in or able to apply for research that is, is, uh, includes what you would like to do as part of these administrative supplements and uh, competitive revisions. You can actually find information on NIH grants at the report tool. The link is on this slide. And I have actually done a search on that 
for results for countries which hold NIH grants. And you should be able to access that search, the results of that search at this link on this slide. Uh, you may have to create yourself an account to actually access that information. Next slide. Next slide. Can I have the next slide? Hello, Dr. Minja, are you able to um, um, move to the next slide? Okay, I will say what's on the next slide while I'm waiting for it. The next slide um, has a few links to the NIH. Maybe we're just missing the last two slides. Um, I have some links that we can share that are the links to the NIH site. They have general coronavirus information. They also have uh, specific information. Oh, here we go. Information for NIH applicants and recipients of NIH funding. And then the Fogarty International Center has links specifically targeting global health researchers. Uh, last slide, please. Okay. Just to touch on, there's a lot of resources out there with information on funding. The African Academy of Sciences has a COVID-19 page uh, with a recording of their webinar that happened at the end of March. And they have a survey for researchers um, on health priorities. Uh, there's a database, somebody has collated coronavirus funding opportunities. The UK has a site and the European Research Area Corona Platform is available and the ET, EDCTP is at the moment advertising a call for mobilization of funding for COVID-19 in sub-Saharan Africa. Okay, uh, that basically uh, concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening. Dr. Jill, thank you very, very much. That was extremely useful and um, really um, very, very helpful for people to 